When you're configuring a machine with TCP IP, you can either do this statically or dynamically. Statically means you've manually sat there at the keyboard and typed it in. Well, I don't know about you, but I've certainly had a typo only once or twice in my life. So, some of the pitfalls, of course, here is it's very error prone. It is so easy to do a faulty subnet address or a faulty IP address instead of a one you accidentally put a 10 because you didn't move between the dots. So based on that, that's a huge pitfall. It's also time consuming. If I only have two machines and they have to communicate with each other, I can statically assign them both. That's easy. If I have 2,000 machines, there has got to be a better way. Now that we've used a few TCP IP utilities, what I'd like to do is to take it a step further and show you how to configure TCP IP. We are currently using Windows 7. How to configure TCP IP is not just how to view it, but how to configure it. So I just want to show you a couple screens for comparison. If I wanted to look at my network card and to see the properties of TCP IP, I could go ahead and do an IP config. Now this is a screen people are familiar with, but my point here is we can display the information, we can't necessarily change the information. So in order to change the information, I'm going to click on Start, and I'm going to go ahead right into Control Panel. We of course need the category of Network and Internet. And we'll go into the Network and Sharing Center. And in the Network and Sharing Center, we have a lot of different information about the network itself. Now I will truly tell you that this demo is about configuring TCP IP and it's going to be right here in the LAN connection. So ultimately this is where we're going to end, but because the LAN connection needs to be configured according to your network, then I just want to spend some time looking at some of the other options on this page. So an example, I'm currently sitting at a machine called Sandra PC. Nice witty name for the machine I happen to be working on. Well, this computer is attached to a very generic network. And when I say generic network, I'm not logged into a domain, but I do have an IP address and configuration that allows me to go one step forward out onto the internet. Now what I like about this network map is it is dynamic. So let's say the network in the middle was down. You would actually see that this and this would be all grayed out because I wasn't able to get there. Or maybe all the activity was fine on the network, but I couldn't get to the internet. So right here in a visual map, I would be able to see exactly where the problems are. Now we could of course go see a full map and it's going to go out and create a full network map, which here, because it is, in fact, I guess we'll call it generic, we don't really know Sandra and Instructor and what they're con attached to, and both of these are machines I happen to be working on on the same desk right now, but they go through a generic network. Notice they can see each other, and of course they go out through the gateway. If I point to it, I get to see the IP address, and of course the gateway brings us right out onto the internet. Now, notice down here the following discovered devices cannot be placed on a map. There's a whole number of items out there running on a work group, and we can't necessarily map them and make them part of ours, but you can go ahead and click on and see them all. If I was logged onto a corporate domain, I would see some information pertaining to that network that I belong to. And notice here we have the internet. These are all dynamic links, and when I give it a click, it sends me right out to the internet itself which is nice to know that you can do this for troubleshooting. But I don't need the internet right now. I know it's working, so we'll close out of it. And now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll close out of our network map, and it's going to bring me back here. So now let's go back into Control Panel, because I'd like to show you another way to get into network properties. We obviously can go through Network and Internet, and then the Network and Sharing Center but to me that's the third click just to get close to where I need to be. Notice here we have view by category. Notice I can look at large or small icons. Let's look at large icons. 
And notice if I view it just by icons, I can go right into the Network and Sharing Center. So in the event, Control Panel looks a little different for you. Hopefully that addressed it. Now, if you're running Windows XP, Control Panel has um, your icon view as well. And the same thing with Vista. What you might also get is something known as uh, Control Panel Home versus um, our detailed or view or list view. But it's all essentially accomplishing the same thing. When you're running Windows 7, they essentially give you something in the top right to toggle back and forth. So notice we have view our active networks. We're in the work network. If you have seen this install that we've done throughout this course and other courses, then you'll see that one of the things that you do is you get to choose which network you're on. It could be a home network, it could be a work network, or it could be a public network, and that really decides how your machine's going to be configured for safety. We can set up new connections. We can connect to a wireless, wired, wireless up, or dial up, or VPN. We can choose home page and various sharing options for the network that I'm on. And of course, we have a troubleshooter that works quite well. So all of these are ways to check and change your network settings. So again, I'm simply going to configure TCP IP. And it seems like a long road into how do you configure TCP IP. But you need to know how to configure it because that IP address gateway, subnet mask, and DNS settings are what are going to give you access to all the other items that you have an ability to take care of and connect to. So let's go ahead and just go right into the LAN connection. Notice we can see it's wired because there's a picture right here of an Ethernet cable. When I click on LAN connection, you're going to get to the local area connection status. Now, if you're not running Windows 7, you're running Windows Vista, you're running Windows XP, or even Windows 2000, this is going to be a very familiar screen to you. A couple very minor changes, like the look of the buttons, but essentially this screen is very similar. Now, because IP version 6 is very prominent in the newest versions of Windows, you will always see IP version 6 statistics in addition to version 4. So notice here, version 4 connectivity is to the internet. So that's working and we've already proved it works. IP version 6 has no internet access. The gateways here, where I'm taping from, are not configured for IP version 6, so we don't necessarily have that access. The media, otherwise known as the network card, is enabled. We have been running for 2 hours. 2 hours, 1 minute, 32 seconds. And of course, the speed is I'm on 100 megabits for this particular network. If I was to click on details, you're going to see all the details on your network connection. And this is very similar to IP config slash all. Remember, I brought that screen up to show you the configuration, but it pointed out this is how you see it, not necessarily change it. Well, this is how you can see it here. Again, just a different looking screen, same information but you can't change it here either. Where you need to go to change it is always going to be properties. So I'm going to go into properties. Again, this screen relatively unchanged except for the addition of items like IP version 6 with a link layer topologies. So here, local area connection properties is where we're really going to go to start configuring IP addresses. And again, this has been the screen we've been looking at for most of the Windows products moving from Windows 2000 forward. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at TCP IP version 4, which is the one we'll be working with, and I'm going to click on Properties. Again, familiar screen across many versions. Obtain an IP address automatically. Obtain DNS servers automatically. And what to do with an alternate configuration. With an alternate configuration, if this asks for an IP address from a DHCP server and it doesn't get one, it can either use a PIPA, which is your 169.254 subnet address that it will be self-configured, or I can decide to configure this to a local subnet so that it can see local resources but maybe not necessarily um, get out onto the internet. However, notice when I say not necessarily, here we do have items for DNS and WINS. 
So when it self configures for a PIPA, you get 169.254.x.x, meaning the last two octets are self configured. You don't get a gateway, you don't get a DNS, and you don't get a Win server. Well, the whole reason for an alternate configuration is because DHCP has not given you a configuration. So maybe DHCP is not configured or not able to be seen. You can kind of self configure here your gateway and your DNS server. So in the event you can actually reach out to those resources, you will be able to browse the internet until that server comes back up. I'm going to leave it on automatic private IP address. And very simply, if you were to go ahead and obtain this IP address from your network administrator or whatever documentation you have, you would be able to find out that you would be able to go ahead in here and configure an IP address. Now we can also go on advanced. Advanced allows you to assign more than one IP address, more than one gateway, more DNS servers. We can also deal with a um, DNS search order. What a DNS search order is, is if right now I look for a machine called Instructor. It assumes that Instructor is on the same domain or has the same fully qualified domain name as my machine. So let's say I'm looking for Instructor and I happen to be in a network called Sandra Network dot internal. Well, now I'm going to look for a machine called Sandra PC or Michelle PC. And what it's going to do is automatically append Sandra network dot internal to the end of that and look up in those zones. I can append DNS suffixes so it searches through all these different zones. And of course your Win servers if you happen to be using Wins. We have a fairly new setting in this dialog box with these versions of Windows. It's called Validate Settings on Exit. And this means as we're exiting out of this, it's going to tell me if there's something wrong. Now I've gone ahead and put in a subnet that I don't have access to and a DNS server that I don't have access to. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and close it. And you'll see this is going to be thinking and it automatically knows that there's a problem. Now again, there is not. 192.168.2 in terms of a subnet here. So it's trying to look for all the different problems in the name resolution. It's trying to figure out why it can't find the DNS server. So this is a good thing. Some of the issues that we've always had in TCP IP configuration is literally something as simple as a typo. So if I've done that because it's a typo, then automatically it will pick that up and correct it before I've had a chance to go ahead and leave the machine. So notice here, Windows can detect the correct network settings for you. I can go ahead and try to apply this fix. Now again, this fix means maybe we're trying to find what networks are out there. So it'll try it, it'll look for additional problems, and it will go ahead and do this until everything is fine. Notice here, problems found, DHCP is not enabled, and because it couldn't contact anything on that particular subnet, that was fixed by enabling it. So let's go ahead and hit close. Let's go ahead and hit properties. Let's go back in here. And what you'll see is these settings have been changed right back. So again, the addition of that little checkbox that says validate these settings upon exit allow a lot of the typos to now be diagnosed before it's too late.